Um, as we were discussing before, um, uh, vaccine approaches to uh, brain tumors uh, are in development. Uh, they have been in development now for um, uh, quite a, a few years. And one of the uh, vaccines that um, has been really thoroughly tested is uh, a, a vaccine against uh, EGFR variant 3 uh, mutation um, that occurs in about 25% to 30% of glioblastomas. Um, this particular vaccine um, uh, called rindopepimod is a peptide vaccine um, uh, engineered to uh, uh, trigger an immune response to um, the, the, the EGFR uh, variant that I mentioned before. Uh, this um, uh, vaccine was tested in um, uh, recurrent disease and also in uh, newly diagnosed glioblastoma. There was a large uh, study called ACT4 uh, that tested, it was a, a phase three double-blind placebo-controlled trial uh, that tested um, uh, the utilization of the vaccine uh, in uh, newly diagnosed patients uh, um, in combination with uh, uh, standard therapy, so radiation and temozolomide. Um, very uh, much anticipated uh, uh, results. Uh, we, I think, all felt that um, based on prior experience with this vaccine, uh, the study will be positive, meaning that patients receiving uh, the vaccine uh, would uh, do significantly better. Um, to our surprise, um, uh, the study unfortunately was negative, indicating that uh, patients receiving the vaccine actually did not um, derive a survival benefit from, uh, from it. And, uh, and that was again in newly diagnosed patients. Um, so that was a huge disappointment. Uh, you know, I've been working with this uh, vaccine, the, the sponsor, um, of the study uh, since uh, 2007, so I had a kind of a long history of um, working with it, and I've had patients um, uh, receiving the vaccine who's, who've done very well, and uh, and of course in, in my mind, uh, without you know knowing the results of the study, I, I felt that we're going to have um, a, a vaccine for brain tumors that's going to be approved, uh, but it looks like it wasn't meant to be. But thankfully, uh, you know, I, I think this this agent is not. Um, so to speak, dead. Uh, uh, it has been tested in a recurrent glioblastoma in the REACT study that you mentioned, um, where uh, it was combined with uh, bevacizumab, uh, the monoclonal antibody anti against the EGF. Uh, and this, and the, in this study, um, contrary to the newly diagnosed patients, uh, patients receiving the uh, combination of uh, bevacizumab and rindopepimod uh, actually um, uh, showed um, long-term responses to treatment. Um, the drug was again very well tolerated. Um, the data is still being analyzed, uh, but uh, I do hope that uh, potentially, uh, if the study happens to be positive, uh, rindopepimod might um, find its niche in a recurrent disease setting, um, uh, and, and uh, especially in combination with bevacizumab. So I think we, we need to wait uh, for the for the final uh, analysis, but. Uh, uh, I am I'm really hopeful. I, I like the, the product a lot. The, it, it's associated with minimal toxicity. Um, uh, you know, the patients get the vaccine initially twice, the two priming doses every two weeks, and then they go on to receive a monthly doses, uh, very, um, very well tolerated with no major side effects. So I think it would be um, really great news for the new oncology community and for GVM patients to uh, if the recurrent disease study is positive, to have this uh, available um, as an option uh, because we um, indeed in recurrent disease do not have good options uh, for patients and uh, survivals are not great. So we definitely need something uh, that would uh, sort of uh, shift the balance in favor of longer survival and I'm hoping that uh, hopefully this vaccine would be the answer. It is a great time for the development of immunotherapies in cancer. As we know, immunotherapies are making uh, a difference in the life of patients with lung and melanoma and other malignancies. S uh, at this time, we are trying to replicate those successes in the treatment of glioblastoma. The most exciting studies are, of course, for me, the ones that are going on, the phase three potential registration studies, because that means that they are closer and closer to be able to offer them to the patients. I am an investigator on the ICT-107 study, and this study is very important for us in California as it's one of the first clinical trials in glioblastoma that's also supported by the California Stem Cell Institute. It's 
a stu the study is supposed to target the glioblastoma stem cells and in order to eliminate the glioblastoma, you have to eliminate the most active cells of the tumor, which are the stem cells. So it's a very interesting, very wonderful idea. The data from the preliminary studies that were done in the past were very promising for a special subtype of the patients, the patients that have the HLA-A2 uh, haplotype in the blood. Uh, it is something that is tested all the time for transplant. It just tells you what the category of uh, the blood group, in a way, is for patients. But for that pa group of patients in uh, the previous studies, we looked at a great improvement on overall survival. So we are very excited to participate. We are very hopeful for the study success, and we'll see what the results are, hopefully by the next year, Society of Neuro-Oncology meeting. Uh, DCVAC has been in clinical trials now for a few years and uh, we are still following patients that are enrolled in the study. I am an investigator on the DCVAC studies too. Uh, we have uh, momentarily stopped the recruitment while uh, the data are getting processed. The previous studies with DCVAX were very promising. For both uh, vaccines that we talked, we are talking about uh, immune treatments that will target uh, special subgroups of patients. And we are getting closer and closer to personalized medicine. If the ICT-107 targets patients that have a special blood haplotype, the DCVAX uh, goes in a way in a different direction where the patient's tumor is collected at the time of the surgery and is uh, processed to generate the maximum number of antigens. And then the antigens are uh, introduced to the patient's immune cells, the dendritic cells, which then are re-injected in the patient's circulation. So every batch of DCVAX is specific to the patient from which the tumor came, which gets us to the level of trying to really treat every tumor as one tumor and not as a part of a much larger disease. So I'm very hopeful that we're going to learn a lot from the DCVAX results, and I hope we're going to be talking about that really soon.